How do you guys usually tell apart a good game from a masterpiece? Personally, I base it all on the lasting impact, because in both cases, I'm bound to play the game, have a good time, and then I can tell you, yeah, this game is great! Play it! But there are times when a game leaves such a strong impact on me that said experience never disappears after so many days, months, and even years. Sinoli Chronicles, Lost Judgment, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, Metroid Dread, Devil May Cry 5, among many others are titles that have gone above and beyond. The love I have for these games is something I can't describe in a few words, because they have left me with marks that will never disappear. The greatest part about them is that they achieve that through different methods, some by giving me a completely new experience, others because they are tied to important events of my life. Games like Metroid Dread or Devil May Cry 5 because they overhyped me to the point of insanity and ended up being better than I hoped they would be, and others for making me realize video games can do something more than just giving you a fun time. Sometimes they can deliver a good message, can be used to express different emotions or even subvert expectations. What we have today is a game that encapsulates many of those aspects, one whose existence I've known for a long time. I've mentioned it a few times in different videos, and I have even used music from it because it's so good. Valhalla Cyberpunk Part 10 Action. Valhalla, in the simplest of terms, is a visual novel developed by Venezuelan studio Sukeban Games. And yes, you heard me right, Venezuelan. That's why I put the game on my Latin American representation video. In this game you take the role of bartender Jill Stingray. Your objective? Mix drinks and change lives. The game doesn't have anything you will call crazy in the gameplay department. The players get access to different ingredients which are used to prepare different drinks, with all of them having their own recipe. It's easy and simple to understand, and you have some sort of liberty in which drinks you serve to your customers. They can outright tell you what they want to drink, sometimes they leave it so open you can choose whatever you want as long as it is close to what they're in the mood for. Or in the best case, they can order drinks where you have full control on how much alcohol you want to give them. This is great, because this allows you to get customers so drunk they can alter the conversation severely. This risks them leaving early, but it's so worth it just for a chance to get more conversations out of them. There's also a small strategic element to this, as good service and different drinks reward you with money, which is necessary in order to get whatever Jill wants to buy and to pay her debts. This is when money really matters, since buying stuff helps Jill to be focused at work, making it easier to serve the right drinks, which again, gives you more tips so you can buy more stuff. But most importantly, it's imperial that you manage your money wisely, because failing to pay your debts gives you a bad ending. Which, trust me, you don't want that to happen to you because you missed a few dollars. Just like I did. No! 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 <laughs> and that's pretty much all the gameplay there is. You mix drinks, pay your debts, buy your necessary stuff, and try to get by day by day. Just like in real life. But that's not the highlight of the game. As a bartender, your duty isn't just to serve drinks, but also engage in conversation with your customers, and this can range from casual stuff, personal struggles, current events, or even world building. And this is where Valhalla truly shines, in the character interactions and the conversations you have with them. When I see these people talk and the emotions they make me feel, that's when I realize this game has immaculate writing. I don't think I'm overreacting when I say it's one of the best I've seen, like, in general, say, when these characters talk about their cyberpunk society or the uniqueness of their world, it's all explained in such detail you can easily see it all make sense. Just as an example, you have these androids called Lilims. At first, the player will barely know anything about them. Actually, the first few days of the game, I didn't even realize there were androids just chilling around. I just thought they were regular people and their appearance was an artistic choice. I even believed the word Lilim was used as a derogatory term at first. But no, it all eventually started to make sense. Because the grinding was doing an excellent job in making me understand the rules of their existence and how they work within their world. How do they live? How different they are from humans? Their fear of mortality? How the concept of age applies to them? And the best part about it? I was completely invested in all of it! 
because it is never explained to you as if you were reading a Wikipedia article. You learn about it by having some casual conversation with other people. It felt so natural that it made me feel part of the world, as if I was meeting a friend from another country and I was learning about their different lifestyle. And it wasn't just learning about Lilims, it was also about how this society works and how people get by. There's even these sections in Jill's apartment where you can read online articles and forums about current events. These aren't just great for world building. But it's also how real the dialogue of these random internet users is. They feel like people you have most likely seen at some point online. It's a small thing, but one that really puts into perspective how much thought was put behind this world. The cyberpunk society of Valhalla wasn't just genuine, it was alive. Every character is so tightly gritted and you get all sorts of variety. People comfortable with how they are, others living with regrets, some are still trying to find a way in life, or at times, corgis! <laughs> but the best part about these characters is that most of them get a chance to shine, and not in a way that they're all very deep or complex. Sometimes it's simply because the conversations you have with them are so engaging, which again, can vary between world building, current events, relationships, personal struggles, and even work. Everyone had something to tell, and they were all great because they were greeting realistically while still considering the rules of a cyberpunk society. Literally the worst characters I can think of are those who are like, oh yeah, that one character who showed up that one time and then never returned. Also those characters who are a jig reference, like, ew? But I mean, at the worst they're inoffensive, but still memorable to some degree. But for me, no other character in the game shines more than the protagonist, Jill Stingray. If I told you guys that Jill Stingray elevated herself all the way up to become one of my favorite video game characters of all time, would you believe me? If I put her right next to Edelgard and Ichiban Kasuga on my list, would you think I'm overreacting? Well, that's exactly what happened and it's so fucking insane. Do you remember when I made the LGBTQ representation in video games video and one of the biggest highlights there was Jill? Back then, I still didn't play the game, but a friend of mine filled a whole paragraph on her going apeshit about what makes Jill such a fantastic character. After playing the game, I get her. Every single thing she said was accurate. I think what makes Jill so great is that she has so many qualities in her character that it can make any person relate to her even to some small degree. But her qualities don't make her an overly perfect character, like... You see how many games, JRPGs specifically, have protagonists with the personality of a plank of wood, but still are near perfect at everything they do and are well liked by everyone? I'm personally not a big fan of that, but I get why they do it. It's so any player can put themselves in the protagonist's shoes. With Jill, however, there's way more than meets the eye. Because when you look at her, at first glance she gives the impression that she's this perfect, stoic and cool-headed bartender that does everything right. But no, she's cool because she's just a regular person. Someone who talks to her cat and laughs at puns. She's one to listen to her friends when they need it, but can also make mistakes, carry the weight of her past and break down when she's pushed beyond her limits. But what made me appreciate her was how much I related to her. Without spoiling anything, there was this one part where you get to learn more about Jill's past. And something about what she said made me think, wow, she is literally me. And not in a Ryan Gosling way, but in a way that hit me on a very personal level. The way in which she describes her struggles and how she felt emotionally about that pushed me as far as crying because I've never seen a game handle these topics with the respect and sincerity they deserve. And I feel they do that with other topics people can relate to. I am so happy a protagonist like Jill exists, because she's such an honest and heartfelt depiction of a 20-something trying to get through life. She was the perfect character to deliver the themes and messages of Valhalla. So far I know I've been mostly sucking off this game to no end, and to be fair, that's because it really doesn't have anything I can call awful. If anything, any bad comments I can have about it are nothing more than nitpicks. For example, the most obvious one, Jeek a postmodern RPG. So for some reason in the Valhalla universe, Cheek is considered a cult classic video game and... Man, I know both games were published by the same company and Cheek released way later than Valhalla, but come on, there's a clear difference between these games' writing. 
but you can feel someone was stroking their ego really hard with this. And yes, I pronounce the game's name as Jig. It's more fun that way. As for other nitpicks I might have, well, there is something else. I already mentioned how all characters have a moment to shine. They all have some interesting stories to share, and they're all really good. But thing is, some of those stories don't get a proper closure. Just as an example, without spoilers, you have Gilia, great character who has a past he clearly doesn't want to talk about. Throughout the game, you learn more and more about him and even find new stuff through external sources. But his plotline doesn't get a proper closure. The very last thing you talk with him is trying to figure out if he had sex or not. And while it is funny and a great moment between friends, I wish we had gotten that proper end. And it's weird because I think the choice of leaving some loose ends might be intentional. Valhalla is a game that very well simulates real-life situations, and naturally you cannot know every single thing about another person. Maybe I'm looking too deep into it, but I guess I was so attached to these characters that I would have liked to see their storylines get grabbed up. And that's really all the quote-unquote bad things I have to say about the game. They are so insignificant that I can ignore them, and they don't take away the fact that this game was a life-changing experience for me. And speaking of... If I had to describe this game in a few words, I would say that Valhalla is real, genuine, and humane. It's one of those games that constantly pulls your emotions. One of its strongest points is how close it hits to real life. Like, my experience with visual novels isn't that wide, but just to set up an example. In Ace Attorney games, you get really good dialogue and funny moments, with usually you taking down a big bad guy with a lot of power by the end of it. Or say, some Japanese games, which Valhalla clearly takes a lot of inspiration from. You're not a group of people hoping to defeat the big evil company that rules everything. In Valhalla, none of that happens. These are just a bunch of people being affected by the world that surrounds them and how they'll react differently to it while trying to continue with their lives. It's so close to reality, which is why, in a way, I understand why some storylines didn't get proper closure, or why some background events like the city riots, the corrupt police, or the hacking group are just that. Background events, they are explained, they are developed, but they are not the main focus. Nobody suddenly appears to fix all the wrongs. You simply have characters aware of what's going on, and they are cautious about it, but continue with their lives while being there for one another. This is part of what makes Valhalla so unique. It tells a fantastic story while being grounded. It does it so well that it's hard not to feel identified with it in many occasions. Even in the little things, like how every day you have to get something Jill doesn't need so she can stay focused while still having to pay her debts. Isn't it kind of ironic how I pre-ordered the Jill Nendoroid while my bank account was in zeros? That only proves two things. One, the game is very realistic. Two, I'm a fucking idiot. But the one thing I love the most about Valhalla is how it tackles many different everyday topics and handles them all incredibly well. Romance, breakups, the loss of someone, regret, depression, work life, family issues, doing things you hate just to please others. There is something of value to take from all of this, and you'll be surprised at how hard it can hit home. One thing in particular I fucking loved is how sex positive this game is. Sexual needs, sexuality, sex workers, funny sex anecdotes. Valhalla is the first game I've ever seen who tackles this without any shame. And you know what? There shouldn't be any shame in that. A lot of media usually handles these topics in one of two ways, with a typical Oh, um, you mean the th th that thing? Or the classic Fuck, 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 Penis, penis, pussy, pussy. Even in real life, I understand some people don't feel comfortable sharing their sex life and others don't care about it, and that's fine. But some people still act as if sex was some sort of taboo and like... No, sex is a totally natural part of life, and for many others, it is a necessity. So it was very refreshing seeing this game put all of that in a very positive light. Valhalla is a game that genuinely left a huge impact in my life. I've known about its existence for years. At first I thought the game looked and sounded great, and you know, let's go there quickly. I love everything about this game's presentation. To these sprites, you know I'm biased for them. But they're also lively and diverse while still capturing that cyberpunk aesthetic. And the soundtrack is simply a marvel. I love playing it when I feel stressed, when I'm working out, driving, or just want to chill for a bit. 
there's something I like and I don't about it though. In the game, you have a jukebox that can play any songs you want, and to be fair, most songs can fit any context that is happening on screen, it's impressive! But there's also a chance you can set up a playlist that is completely out of tone with what is going on. Again, it's nothing that completely kills the mood, but it can be distracting at times. But as I was saying, when I finally got my hands in the game, it was like a roller coaster I didn't want to get off from. I wasn't just grabbed by the incredible atmosphere of the game. I was completely invested in the world, the characters and their conversations. It all started simple, but interesting. But soon the game evolved into something more personal. Again, again, no spoilers, but I just wanna say, there was a point that hit me so hard on an emotional level, I had to take a rest from the game for a few days. When I felt mentally prepared to continue once again, I didn't jump back into it right away, because that's when I realized. I got so attached to this game and everything it represents to the point I didn't want it to end, but when I eventually beat it, I thought, I am glad I went through all of it. And not just because it was one of the most emotional and incredible stories I've seen in a game, but because I believe I played this at the perfect time. After going through a piece of shit career, in a shitty college, multiple heartbreaks, the loss of loved ones and learning self-love, Valhalla was a game I resonated strongly with. And here's the funny part, after so many therapy sessions and efforts to better myself as a person, Valhalla didn't exactly teach me anything I didn't know already. But the way it handles different issues and the realism behind every line of dialogue, I couldn't help but be moved by all of that. And sometimes, you just need to remember what you already know to keep going. Valhalla is a very mature game, and not because there's a lot of swearing or mentions about sex, but because of how thought-provoking it is and how it handles different emotions. There are so many things I want to discuss in further detail, but that's spoiler territory and I really want more people to play this game. I cannot tell you when it will be the right time for you to play it, but all I know is that once you do it, by the end of it you'll be saying, God damn, maybe life is worth living after all.